Well, hello everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the webinar. We're going to be talking about products, the use of products, uh, the products tab and products and opportunities in Salesforce. My name is Gary Smith. I'm the CEO of the Gary Smith Partnership. I'm uh, delighted to say I've got alongside me on one side I've got Javid, Javid Ahmed. Hello Javid. Hi there everyone. Javid's one of our uh, senior consultants, so uh, we'll do a bit of a double act together, Javid, in, in terms of the demo and so on. And I've also got alongside me Derek Davis. Derek is the European Sales Support Director for Gilbarco Vida Route. Gilbarco is um, one of Europe's uh, leading manufacturers of, of petrol pumps and associated uh, products and services with a global global operation. So uh, thanks for joining us, Derek. You're a big right, user of uh, products Hello. and schedules and things, so uh, get some insight from you. Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll jump straight in. Um, and we're going to talk. As I said, we're going to talk about products, uh, products opportunities. We covered quotes and um, uh, and approval processes related to products and discounts and so on. We'll cover a little bit of that as well. And um, hopefully, we will just have a few minutes also to show you uh, uh, a product selection wizard. Some some ways in which we've extended the basic functionality in Salesforce with uh, with the use of uh, advanced product selection wizards and so on as well. So. Let's just jump in. I'm on the I'm on the products tab in Salesforce at the moment. Um, you you almost certainly have the products tab available, but if you can't see it in your instance of Salesforce, then go into the um, customize my tab section. So click on the little plus, customize my tab, and then uh, you'll be able to uh, be able to select the products tab. We've got a bunch of products um, in this particular instance of Salesforce, so. We can go to the standard price book. We'll come back to price books and uh, a use of price books as well in a little while. But we can go and get a view of the different products that we've got uh, in this instance of Salesforce. So let's just let's just pick one. This is a this is a product. Um, it's got a product name. There's a number of standard fields on here. Obviously, the product name, the product code is is not a mandatory field, but as a, a general rule, many companies will have a obviously have a product code. We can see that this particular product is active. What that means is that this product, I can use this product, I can add this product to a live opportunity. If I make it inactive or uncheck the active box, the product doesn't disappear. You, you never delete products in Salesforce, but you can make them inactive. That means any opportunities with this product already on it will, will remain in place and the pricing will remain in place, but I won't be able to select it for a new opportunity. So. So uh, this product is active. I can use it on, on a new opportunity. This is a standard field as well here, the, the product family. Thing category, in other words. You can see in this, in this instance of Salesforce, we've got a bunch of different product categories. We've got sort of installation support and training as well. And, and that really is, is, a, is a, an important point. A product, a product in Salesforce can be anything you want. Really. It doesn't have to be a physical item, in many cases it will be a physical item, but it doesn't have to be. And a product can be could be uh, installation services, professional services, training, it could be um, setup costs, um, it could be um, in, a, in in my own company we use we use products. We've actually renamed the products tab to be resources because we don't have we don't have tangible product. The only thing we sell is our time. So in our case we've got um, we re simply renamed the products tab to be resources, and in our instance of Salesforce, you would see Salesforce consultant, data migration specialist, programmer, etc. But it's just 100% um, of standard uh, of standard products. There's a couple of other fields on here. That we will come back to this. The revenue scheduling. We'll come back to that. You can see that there are some revenue scheduling fields at the bottom of this. But let's come back to that. And we'll also, Javid, I think we'll also come back to the, the price box as well. And we'll, yeah. we'll go through the yeah, price box yeah. in. In, in a few moments, but um, uh, that is uh, um, a standard. Um, them the standard fields on a product. Many companies will add additional fields if you've got additional sort of specifications and so on that you want to capture about the product. And um, this is the the product family. You might have it'd be quite common job if you have category and subcategory yeah, and absolutely. that kind of thing as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think there are a lot of customers who have a, a large number of products. Will segment their product into subcategories into a lower level of detail into a lower level of detail to uh, make it easier for the sales team to, yeah. to use and um, equal time. Yeah, yeah, and, and and that also is, is brings me to an important point.
point really. If you look at this particular the products that we've got configured here, then these are the different products that we've got available in, in this instance of Salesforce. So we've we've applied a little bit of naming conventions. So we've got things like the like the maintenance contract that we might sell, gold, silver and bronze. And rather than call it bronze maintenance contract or bronze service contract, gold service contract and so on, because then these 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 products are listed alphabetically. So we've we've given them all, you know, the same sort of name and then differentiated with them with the names at the end uh, towards the end of that um the, the name of the phrase, you know, delivery, three day delivery. So so again you can see um these are all the different products that we've got in this instance of Salesforce. Um and um as I say, you know, anything that anything that has some revenue associated it with an with an opportunity or anything that might appear on a subsequently on an invoice line item can be a product. Um, some companies also will will use products at a very detailed level. I mean, you you direct you 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 know you go down to the individual sort of product item, but not to that real fine detail of, of individual accessory and, and that no, the, we, more we, categories. Yeah, we, we, this is this is a functionality that we use to support our production planning teams. And as as Gary, as Gary said, it's not down to component level, it's not bill of material level by any means, but it, 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 in some of our product we have very high level options, for example being, do you want stainless steel or do you want ordinary um, long stainless steel, and that is picked out in, in, in product level. And then there's a later specification yeah. process that takes yeah, that detail, exactly. but, um, but it gives you, when you look at an opportunity, yeah. it gives you an overview of yeah, what, what, what products are, are associated with that opportunity. We, ha we have a number of other customers that will um, go down to sort of finite detail in terms of the products, and and in fact are pushing those through to ERP systems and so on, and um, uh, you know really using that to um, to construct the, the the end total product or uh, or indeed for invoicing terms and so on. Let's um, that's a list of products. Let's jump over to an opportunity. So this is an opportunity. If you're if you're familiar with Salesforce, then you'll you'll be familiar with this, uh, an opportunity screen, something like this, the opportunity name, the type, close date, stage, etc. You can see here that, that the amount field on this opportunity is blank, um, and that's principally because I haven't yet added a product to this opportunity. When I do so, then you'll see that the amount field will update. And what, hap what will happen in a lot of organizations is that maybe when you first go and see the customer, when the, when the opportunity stage is, is let's say prospecting, you really don't know what what the customer is going to be buying, but you, you might still want to attribute it with some value. So because I haven't got any products associated with the opportunity, I can go in there, not the not the, that bit was what I meant to click, and I can say so. You know, I think this this opportunity is worth roughly ten thousand pounds. So we don't really know anything about the opportunity other than it's got an overall price and so on. You also see here. We've got some we've got some custom fields um, um, which will come into play in a minute when we add a, a discount. So we'll show you how the we'll show you how the approval process and discounting works and so on. You can see that that the, the approval required field is set to not required on this opportunity. That's because the discount is less than ten percent. So we've got a workflow in the field update related here, the, 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 the zero discount at the moment. Um, so therefore, it's not required. If it goes over 10%, then it does become required, and uh, we need to submit it for approval. So let's just go straight in, and we will add. So we looked at our list of products. Let's go and add one or two to this uh, for this opportunity. So um, let's have our friend there. I think that was the one we were looking at just a second ago, wasn't it? The, uh, the generator, and uh, I don't know. Let's have the uh, the gold service contract, and uh, let's have some installation services. Well, let's just have that. Up. So, so I've selected the the three different products I want. It's fairly easy here because I've got uh, whatever it twenty or whatever it is different product. If you've got lots of products, then um, you need to start searching for them. You can do that by the by the keyword search or by alphabetical name, etc. Which is why the naming convention is important. It's fairly straightforward here. We've got three products that we want to to add. So let's just add those to the opportunity. Now we also want to know. Um, what's the quantity? So, how many of those products are we adding to the opportunity? Well, the gold service contract we only want one of those. So um, you can see it's got an annual cost of twelve thousand um, pounds. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, we are uh, quite expensive. But let's just have two of the hundred thousand pound uh, general diesel thousand kilowatt generators, whatever they are, 
and um, we're going to have some installation services as well. And really here we're saying, well, what's the unit price of the installation services? So here we're saying it's, for the sake of argument, £800 a day. So let's just assume it can take us 10 days worth of work to, to, install, this, um, to install this product. Click Save. Then you can see that here are the product line items that I've just added to the opportunity. Um, so here I've got uh, two of the uh, Gen Watt diesels, so two of them, list price is £100,000, I'm selling them for £100,000, I haven't applied any discount at all yet, so these are the, the, the total value of the individual line items, and you can see here on the amount field, then the, the amount of that opportunity is the sum of the three product line items. So, so that, I think I had £10,000 in there a few minutes ago. That's overwritten the amount field with the value of those three different line items. Um, so that's that's fundamentally how you relate a product to an opportunity. I'll come back to this little checkbox um, in one second as well. Um, of course, many organizations, um, in many organizations there in your business, this is how you work, so you, you add your product to the opportunity and so on. But in many organizations, they will use this piece of functionality here. This is a, a standard object, uh, the quotes function in Salesforce. And this really covers the situation where you might have, um, you might need to give two, three, four, half a dozen different quotes to a customer um, as all part, of the selling, uh, all part of the sales process. So in other words, um, I might need to give uh, a quote uh, uh, with one with the old service contract, one with the bronze, ones with 10, 12 days of installation services, whatever it might be. So let's just let's just quickly look at that. Let's just quickly create a product. I'll just, for the sake of argument here, just call it the test one. I'm not going to fill out any of these other fields. You can see there's a bunch of fields on the, on the product, which in the interest of moving along, we won't do that. You can see, so this is my quote, my test one quote. And you can see here I've got some quote line items associated with the product. I'll also just go back to the opportunity. And what I'll do is let me just create a new quote, a second quote. So we call this quote test two. Let's just save that. And this time, rather than just copying over the product, I am going to um, let's just get rid of the gold service contract and instead exactly the same function as the uh, previously so let's have the silver service contract um, and I don't know let's just have the I just suppose you'd have the same day delivery on a generator but never mind um, let's just have the same day delivery we'll have uh, one of those and we'll have one same day delivery so now we've got a second quote on my opportunity and the quote line items the product associated with that quote are, are obviously different. So I'll just quickly go back to the opportunity. So here's my two quotes. And I've got a slightly different value associated with each of those individual quotes. Now, the value of this deal is not the best part of £450,000. The, the value of this deal is not the sum of the two quotes added together. Because these are mutually exclusive the customer is only going to select one of these quotes. So let's say for the sake of argument, I'm still in my still in my sales process, the customer hasn't made the decision yet, but, but I actually think that this quote here is the most likely, and in actual fact, that's the one I want to count for pipeline management purposes. So at the moment, I've got my £220,000 in my opportunity, that's what's in the pipeline. But let's just go for that quote. And I've got this button sync here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on sync. So what I've done is I've synchronized the product, the product line items on this quote with the opportunity. So if I go back to my opportunity, you can see now that my amount is £217,000. That's because I've synced this quote with my opportunity. If I went back and synchronized test one quote, then I would replace these product line items with the product line items 
from my first quote, and that amount field would change as well. So that's how that's how you don't have to use quotes with products. Some companies do, and, and, and some don't. You can just use products. We could have gone in and created you know, umpteen more quotes, and I can decide. But this this allows me to keep track of what the different product the the different product combinations are quoted for the customer, and I can easily decide which one of these I want to include for my client purposes. Now then, I said a moment ago I wanted to explain uh, the scheduling process, so that little checkbox there as well. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go back to my first quote, which has got the gold product associated with it, so I'm just going to resync the other quote. And just go back to my opportunity. And what I'm going to do on this quote, on this product, so this is, in fact, just what I'm going to do, just to show you exactly how this can work from a, a default perspective, is I'm going to delete that product line item. I'm just going to re-add it. So I want to show you a piece of functionality that happens when you first add some products to the opportunity. So we'll have one. This is a service contract. We're going to charge the customer £12,000 for this service contract. Now that is £12,000, but let's assume that we are going to charge the customer not £12,000 up front, we're going to charge the customer £1,000 a month. So I deliberately made it easy for myself to choose uh, to choose, choose eleven shows £12,000 as the overall sales amount. So that amount is, that figure of 12000 is included in my amount figure. It's part of the overall sales value. But actually, I'm going to, I'm going to collect that revenue of £1,000 a month. So what we've done is, on this product, is we've set up a, what's called a default schedule. So by, by adding that product to the opportunity, it's taken my series of dates starting from the close date onwards and scheduled for me a thousand pounds a month on each of those on each of those dates. Now in your business, Derek, you are big users of yeah. this function. Not so much on service contracts. Yeah. Tell us tell us why you use this, well, this scheduling. Uh, we we have a requirement from our from our um, our head office to, to forecast revenue as, as well as all their intake so obviously we can use the the, uh, the anticipated close date to track all the intake and uh, uh, sales against the all the targets and so forth but the, the, the scheduling is important for us because it enables us to say okay we've secured this business when are we going to actually see the revenue from it because typically uh, in, in if someone a company buys 50 petrol pumps, they may have that over three or four sites. They don't all obviously go to one site, but they might want to have a program of installation. So it might be a refurbishment program yes. or something. Yeah, like that. that's that's exactly right. It's very common. But the other thing here, Gary, that I would say is that what we find very useful is, is as well as the revenue scheduling, the ability to do um, quantity scheduling, yeah. because yeah. obviously our finance teams look very closely at the reports that are based on the revenue scheduling, but also as I said earlier, going back to our, our production control people, we call them PSI people, they are looking at quantities. They want yeah. to see how many how many how many dispensers or pumps have they, have they got to gear up to build in, in, in mm -hmm. the factory. So it becomes a very powerful yeah, yeah. Uh, approach for us. Yeah, we're, we're showing revenue scheduling here. Um, so we're scheduling twelve thousand pounds over twelve months and and, and we, we won't go into it now, but we could we could reformat that so maybe the I don't know. Maybe the service contract doesn't kick in until the installation is complete. That's, that's going to take three months. So we can we can we can re reschedule the, the schedule, um, and we're showing revenue schedule here. But there's a very very similar function, called quantity scheduling, which is what you use. Yeah. Your, your guys use direct to, to schedule the schedule the number of units yeah. that are going to be built over time. And, and what we've got, Gary, I appreciate you know time is tight, so we can't you know, can't necessarily show it, but there is. Well, you can do both at the same time. Yes, you don't need to come out yes, of the screen and go back into it. And, you know, our users found that very, very, um, you know, very beneficial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely.
absolutely. So yeah, no, that, that's absolutely right. And and we could we could almost spend a webinar just on on kind of scheduling really. But I want to press on because Javid, do you want to show us a, a few other things? I want to look at um, the approval process. What I'm going to do is make life difficult for you just by going into one of these um, opportunity line items. And I'm just going to apply a discount to. Am I going to apply a discount of 20% to the main item? And um, what we have got here is behind the scenes a workflow and field update running so that the approval status, and you remember just before I, I applied that discount, the approval required was set to not required. So now it's telling me that it is required. Yes. So so just, just kind of talk us through some of that stuff as well. Yes. So as, as Gary mentioned, uh, you, you've got a bunch of rules running in the background, uh, which is updating this approval required bill. Um, so you, I mean, each business is obviously different, so you can control what you, the user threshold is as to the discount they can provide before um, they require approval from their managers or the directors, and etc. So, uh, and you can also enforce it by putting validation rules in as well that um, if they have exceeded, exceeded the discount threshold and, and they haven't obtained approval and they're trying to move it along the sales process and try and set the stage to one of the latter stages like negotiation or close one, we can add or you can add validation rules in which prevent the user from doing that. Okay, but I'll just keep it simple and um, just go ahead and show you the approval process in Salesforce. So this is a, a, a standard Salesforce approval process that I'm going to use, uh, which we've just set up. So I can now pretend um, to be Gary Smith and uh, submit this for approval. So come to each other. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'll click the submit for approval button. Okay. So it's just uh, warning me that if I once I approve it, I can't update this record anymore until it's uh, been approved. I'll click OK. Um, there's a few options that you have around it, but what we've um, or how we've set this up is a person submitting this for approval can decide who they're going to send it to for approval. You can automate this process that, uh, depending on the person approving it, it directly goes to their manager. So you can set that up in Salesforce to automate this process. But we'll go ahead and manually select um, someone. So let's say for example uh, my manager or Gary Smith's manager is Alex Riley. Okay. So I'll select Alex and send it to him for approval by clicking the send to next approval button. Okay. So what it's done is it has locked my opportunity record, so I can't update this record while it's pending approval. And you can see um, I have a field update which will work in the background and set my approval status field automatically to the status of pending. Okay, this has now gone to Alex for uh, approval. Um, you can decide and control how those notifications are sent to that person. You can send out emails, you can send out chapter alerts as well. Um, so just to show you an example of a chapter alert, um, if I just open up Alex's chapter feed record, you can see there there's his or there's that approval request from Gary Smith for the opportunity grant hotels. Okay. And we can see the status is pending. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to now pretend to be Alex, okay. I mean, usually a user wouldn't have the ability to do this, but because we're systematic, we can do this. But I'm now going to pretend to be Alex and approve this uh, discount by clicking the approve slash reject button. I can add in a comment. Okay, so I could say, um, I'm but No pressure then. So I'm putting them under a bit of pressure. I'll click approve. Okay, so what that's now done is it's unlocked the record. So it's going to allow me to go ahead and make the necessary update to close out the cell. And it's also automatically set the approval status to approve. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier on, um, we could add validation rules and etc. 
to prevent the user from moving on in the sales process unless they've obtained approval. Okay. And we have some customers, Jeff, that have quite sort of complex rules and, and depending on the level yeah. of discount right. as well. Okay. I'm going to ask you also just to jump ahead a little bit. Yeah, sure. Don't go to human stuff. This button here. Um, choose price well. Can you just just summarise for us the the purpose? People get confused about the purpose of the price. Book. Yeah. So just just tell us about the price. Book. Yeah. Essentially, a price book in Salesforce is a pricing catalog. Okay. So as we explained earlier on, uh, can we have one set up in here? Yeah. So uh, you have obviously a list of all the products. Okay. And each product, for example, might have a different list price, okay, depending on the customer type. So, for example, um, your strategic customers might receive or be able to buy your product um, at a discounted rate compared to um, your standard customers, okay? So you can see here we have two price books, one, one called um, strategic customer price book and one called the standard price book, okay? So the difference between the two price books, as I explained, is for example, is that for one of the products we selected on our opportunity, the Genwatt diesel um, thousand, a thousand um, generator product, you can see the list price for this product is a hundred thousand pounds. Okay, and this is from the standard price book. Okay, so that's the list price for that product. But if I was to open the strategic customer price book, sure, it's going to be different. Correct. Right. There you go. There's that product, yep. and you can see the list price for that product. If you use this price book, is eighty-five thousand. Yeah, yeah. So the reason you might do this, I mean, obviously the business reasons might be different, but in this case, um, the reason being is because these are strategic customers. So these are customers we are doing business with regularly and buying probably large volumes from us. We will give them a discount. So you, might, you might have a you might have a not for profit price book, or you right. might have a, I don't know a government price book. People people often think you need price books for just because you have no currency, but you don't, do you? No, you don't. So you can you can apply, obviously depending on the currency you choose. Each currency will have its own price. So for example, for GDP, this particular product is a hundred thousand pounds, but in euros it might be a hundred and twenty thousand euros. Okay. So that doesn't, like Gary said, that doesn't mean you need another price book. It just means you can add another list price against the same price book um, for a different price in the currency of your choice. And price books are way of, so if you've got a product that, for example, can be sold in the UK but couldn't be sold in North America, yes. and you want people to choose that, you have two different price books. Correct. Even the, the prices may or, not, may, may or may not translate equally from the currency point of view. Yeah. But you can have a different set of sort of might be sort of Absolutely. Might be, might be, might be. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so just to put that into context, for example, the, this product here, the Genwatt diesel product, this can probably only be sold in the UK but can't be sold in the US. So you yeah. might have um, two price books where this product is included in the UK price book but not in the US price book. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, very good. Just do one thing, final thing for us then, Javid, because yeah. Um, what we've fairly sort of rapidly, fairly quickly there is the whole process of using products on opportunities, products on quotes and so on, and we clicked on that add product button to, to add to product. Now, what do you do if you have got thousands and thousands yeah. of products? Just just spend a moment just to explain that to us. Yeah. So uh, in, in that scenario, uh, what we've usually done for customers is build a custom um, product selection wizard, okay? So uh, I'll use an example customer of ours um, who's in the automotive industry, okay, and they have that literally thousands and thousands of products, okay. So obviously um, the product selection tree in Salesforce, the standard product selection tree works, but it's, it's slightly difficult for the user to navigate around and select all the products they need, okay. So what we did for them was we built a product selection tree which allows the u the user to easily navigate um, and find their product, okay? And how it's grouped is by the product family. Okay, so if I just open up the, their product selection with it, so we obviously built this using um, code and obviously the standard product uh, tab. You can see here on the left-hand side, we have our um, categories, okay? And within each category, we have a list 
of products, the user can go ahead and select which one they want. So for example, I want this Fujitsu workstation. I can see the list price is £504 um, compared to the other ones on the list. So I'll go ahead and select this one. On the right hand side here, I can enter a quantity. Okay, if I want one of these, and I can give the customer a discount if I want to as well. So you can see the options um, are similar to the standard product selection wizard, but it's just laid it's out. Presented in a different way. Presumably, it's, it, and, um, it's relatively easy. I can now go through and select product from a different yeah, category, correct. add it to the list, yeah, and and that bit at the, bit at the bottom will pull up that. Correct. Right. Yeah. Well. So as you can see, I've added this product. Yeah. It's been added to my summary list. I can go ahead and add another one of these. Let's for example, one of these. So I want one of these. And as you can see, in real time, my selection it list gives me a running total. is updated against giving yeah. me a running total of my quote. But this is quite useful if, if I've got a lot of different products, I've got to make sure I include components. So it's not it's not kind of the logic of saying, well, I've got to have one of one of uh, you know one third party services, one of those, one of those, one of those. But it's a good way for the salesperson to eyeball Absolutely. it and make sure, Absolutely. make sure they go. Yeah, because you for the, for these guys, um, the sell because the sales process is pretty complicated and and um, quite a lengthy process. Um, the salesperson does actually spend a bit of time preparing their quote, yeah. so this is uh, made made their life easier. I mean, to quote them, um, they've gone from preparing taking an hour. To prepare a quote to 15 minutes. So yeah, it's a, it's a time to and, and I know that better quality because then we don't miss stuff off the quote correct. on their own. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Very good. Very good. Thanks for that, Javid. So we've we've rattled through quite a lot there in terms of the products, use of products, um, adding products to opportunities um, and quotes, the price book, the approval processes, and, and so on. So there's a lot that we've covered there in just half an hour. Um, we are quite active on our blog, on our website, so if you go to Gary Smith Partnership uh, stroke blog, um, then um, you'll find quite a bit of material on our blog post, including a number of articles uh, about the use of products and so on, so um, one there about advertising the webinar. Um, a lot, we've got a lot on, on dashboards and tips of creating good quality dashboards, but one here on, here on, on using product schedules, for example, so product schedules to say, um, in terms of revenue recognition, um, more there on, on, on identifying um, deals that aren't going to close that are in the pipeline and so on. Uh, but again, more on, on more on products and so on. So obviously, feel free to browse around there in the different categories. And um, and if you like what you read, then share it on uh, Twitter or Google Plus. And uh, don't hesitate to do that. Equally, don't hesitate to click that button there. Getting in touch, we'd be very happy to um, talk to people. If you, we haven't really had a chance to take many questions in this webinar, but uh, if you've got a particular question, then just get in touch with us, and we'd be happy to do our best to answer that. We will publish um, the recording of this webinar. Give us a day or two just to uh, tighten up the editing, etc. But we will put, publish it on you. <coughs> excuse me, on YouTube. So uh, um, we'll let you know that by by email subsequently. I'll say, has, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. You like uh, if you'd like to talk to. You. Thank you very much for your attention, Javid. Thanks very much, Derek. Appreciate you being here, and uh, thanks very much indeed. Thanks, thanks for us, and um, good luck, everybody. Thank you very much indeed.